ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣೆ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸತ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ವಿಲ್ ಚಾನ್ ದ ಟು ಮಂಗಲಾಚರಣ ಶ್ಲೋಕಸ್ ಒನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಟು ಸರ್ಗಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಪ್ರಲಯ ಹೇತು ಮಚಿಂತ್ಯ ಶಕ್ತಿ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರ ವಿದಿತ ವಿಶ್ವಮನಂತಮೂರ್ತಿ ನಿರ್ಮುಕ್ತ ಬಂಧನಮಪಾರ ಸುಖಾಂಬುರಾಶಿ ಶ್ರೀವಲ್ಲಭಂ ವಿಮಲಬೋಧಗನಂ ನಮಿ ಯಸ್ಯಪ್ರಸಾದಹಮೇವ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಮಯ್ಯೇವ ಸರ್ವ ಪರಿಕಲ್ಪಿತ ಇತ್ಥಂ ವಿಜಾನಿ ಸದಾತ್ಮಘ್ರಿ ಪದ್ಮ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಲ್ ರೀಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕವರ್ ದಟ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ತಾಪತ್ರಕಸಂತ ಕಶ್ಚಿದ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಮಾನಸ ಶಿ ಸಾಧನೈರ್ಯುಕ್ತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಪರಿಪೃತಿ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಉಚ ಅನಾಸೇನಸ್ಮನ್ ಮುಚ್ಯೇಯ ಬಂಧನಾತ್ ತನ್ಮೇ ಸಂಕ್ಷಿಪ್ಯ ಭಗವನ್ ಕೇವಲಂ ಕೃಪಯಾವದ ಗುರುರುವಾಚ ಸಾಧ್ವೀ ತೇವಚನ್ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರತಿಭಾತಿ ವದಿ ತೇ ಇದಂ ತದಿತಿ ವಿಸ್ಪಷ್ಟ ಸಾವಧಾನ ಮನಾಶೃಣು ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವಾಕ್ಯ ವೃತ್ತಿ and in this text last time we saw who the student is first the student is approaching the teacher and this student was kashchit kashchit means a very rare person why because to have two of these things come together is rare one the desire to know the self that is that is rare because many people have desires to know many things about the world but to want to know the self which is beyond the world that is rare and then to have the environment conducive to be able to do that some people have that desire but for some reason they may be caught up in something else and it's hard for them to pursue this quest sincerely So kashchit means that kind of seeker who has these two things in place. And so we saw whenever we have these two things in place, make the most of it, use it, because we never know what will happen when. And this seeker, tapatrayarka santaptaha, has acknowledged that in this world, there is constant ups and downs whether it's coming from the adideva 
whether it's um, from these forces, these devatas, with uh, rain or snowstorm or extreme heat, whatever it is, but it's coming from these forces, which are phenomenal forces, which are out of control, or whether it's coming from the people around us. It's coming from war, it's coming from conflict, it's coming from noise, from accidents, from just things that are happening in day-to-day -day life. Or it's coming from within us, whether it's something to do with our body, our back, our stomach, our knees, our eyes, our mind. This student notices that there's always something happening. And now this student, this seeker is kind of dejected because they did not find their solution in the world. They tried, but they did not find it. So Udvigna Manasaha and therefore has kind of turned inwards and on turning inwards develop these qualities, Shamadi, Shama, Dhamma, etc. Develop these qualities and now Sadgurum Pariprichati now wants to seek answers. I want answers to my questions. I'm seeking something. I tried the world. It's not working. There must be something else. And so this is the description of the student. And how the student goes to the guru is, I just want you to tell me what will liberate me from this bondage. Get, tell me what will liberate me from this bondage. Anaya sena, effortlessly, means I want the straight path. I don't want to go on a long winding road. I just want the direct answer. And tanme sankshipya, tell me in brief, tell me as in brief as you can, so that I can recall it, I can remember it, I can abide in it. And just by your grace, because it is only through the grace of the Guru Parampara that this knowledge gets transferred, this knowledge happens. So just tell me that. And the teacher was very happy with the student. The teacher says, Sadvi, your question in verse 5 is very good. And Vajana Vyakti Pratibhati, it, it was very clearly expressed. And so I'm going to tell you, but now my dharma, or the teacher says, the dharma of a teacher is that the teacher has to express it vispashtam, very, very clearly. But the dharma of the student, our dharma as students, Adi Shankaracharya ji is a teacher, our dharma as students is savadhana mana shunu, to listen very attentively. Because in listening, all of our wrong notions can be removed. So now the teacher is going to say in brief, the student asked in brief, tell me the, the way to liberation. So the teacher said, well, I will tell you in brief. This is what it is. We are now in verse number six. Tattvamasya divakyotam Tattvamasya divakyotam Yajjiva paramatmano Yajjiva paramatmano Tadatmya vishayam jnanam Tadatmya vishayam jnanam Tadidam mukti sadhanam Tadidam mukti sadhanam Tattvamasya divakyotam Yajjiva paramatmano Tadatmya vishayam jnanam Tadidam mukti sadhanam So the teacher tells the student, I will tell you mukti sadhanam, sadhanam, the means for mukti. I will tell you the means for liberation, mukti sadhanam. Tad idam, that which is this, I will tell this to you. And what is the means for liberation? 
Jnanam. The means for liberation is Jnanam. That knowledge. Knowledge is a means. Where is this knowledge arising from? Tattvamasyadi Vakyotham. It rises. It rises from the statement. Uttam, it rises from the Vakya statement, Tatvamasi. It rises from the statement that thou art. Why? What does the statement reveal? Tadatnya Vishayam. That statement has for its Vishaya, for his object, oneness. Tadatnya, oneness. So that statement reveals oneness. Oneness between what? Jiva Paramatman ho. Between Jiva, the individual being, and Paramatma, the Supreme Self. So the teacher says, I'm going to tell you the means to liberation. It is knowledge. It is knowledge. What knowledge? That knowledge which arises from this great statement that thou art. What does that statement reveal? Oneness. Tadatnya. Oneness between whom? Jiva and Paramatma. Now, in this we have to think and rethink. Why is knowledge the means? Why not anything else? So first we need to understand what exactly is this bondage? Why is this bondage coming and where is this bondage located? Hmm? So bondage is the feeling of just being subject to constant change. There's continuously experiencing change and the change can be at the level of the body, heat and cold. It can be at the level of the mind, joy, sorrow, joy, sorrow. It can be at the level of the intellect, respect, admiration, then humiliation. It can be all of these levels constantly being subjected to ups and downs of life. And this is what bondage is. And it's also that sense of karta bhokta. Wanting to do more. I want to do this and I need to do that. And I have to go here and I have to go there. That sense of I need to do, I need to go. I need to just set out and get all of these things done. That is called bondage. Or that feeling of being, becoming rather. Wanting to again become. We see that somebody has risen to a greater status. Oh, I want to also become like that. Somebody has gone ahead of us at work. Oh, I also want to become like that. And it's constant. I want to become like this and like this. And when I'm 50, like I should become like this. And when I'm 55, I should become like this. And we have all of these images and ideas in our heads. And there's nothing wrong with all of this in the preliminary stages because we have to improve ourselves we have to better ourselves but in the deeper stages this is all belonging to the ego this is all belonging to the ego so this is what is bondage and when does bondage actually you know when do we get that feeling of bondage is only when we connect to it so for example, there's so many things going on in the world, right? So many things in so many places and countries. Now, when do I feel sad or happy? When I connect to something. So when I turn on the news and I connect to that news, then I have that feeling of bondage. Ha, I am terribly saddened by this or I am very happy about this. When we get connected to a situation, to an experience, when we get connected to it, then we have the feeling, oh, I am terribly sad about this or I am terribly happy about this. So bondage is really when we become connected to something. Hmm? So when I become connected to my body, then 
I experience everything and anything that my body's going through. And I take it upon myself and I identify with it. And it's like a burden. And when I connect myself to the mind, I take all of that. And again, I experience it. I take it as me and I feel that burden. So whenever we connect, we identify, we feel bondage. Therefore, bondage is the, the solution for bondage is knowing actually that there is no connection. There is no connection between the consciousness, awareness and the body, that awareness and the mind, that awareness and the ego. There is no connection. And where is bondage located? Bondage is not located in the body. Body is something that's inert on its own. It cannot really feel or think or see on its own. It's an inert thing. Bondage is not belonging to the mind because the mind is also inert. We have proved in Chandogya Upanishad through the experiment of Shweta Ketu. If you remember that when he didn't eat, his mind stopped working. And then when he started eating, his mind again worked. So that mind is also made of matter, inert matter, right? It's made of all, of all kinds of chemicals. So the mind is not the one who has bondage. And it's certainly not Atman. Atman is never bound. Atman is never bound. So who has bondage? The one who has bondage is called the Jiva, the individuality. That individuality specifically is the reflection of consciousness in the mind, that is the one that has the bondage. So not the body, the body doesn't have, not the mind, not Atman, that Jiva, that reflection of consciousness in the mind known as Jiva has the bondage. And also when we inquire into the Jiva, we understand that the jiva is an illusory entity, <laughs> right? If we inquire deeply, inquire, who is that jiva? Who is that jiva? Who is that jiva? That very jiva, which we sometimes call ego, disappears before our eyes. And it, it happens even if we're not in deep sleep or samadhi. It happens even in, in the waking state when we're totally engrossed in something, that ego disappears. It does. So, you know, it, it is an illusory entity. So there is this bondage, which is the notion of connecting or identifying ourselves with the body, mind and intellect. That's why we have bondage. And this bondage also belongs to that jiva, which is illusory. And therefore, this bondage is illusory. The apt answer is actually there is no bondage. <laughs> there is no bondage, right? There is no bondage because there is no jiva. From the highest standpoint, you are Brahman alone. Hmm? So, but how, how to tell the student this? How to tell the student this is through that Mahavakya Tattvam Asi. So the solution is knowledge because all knowledge does is it corrects this wrong notion. It corrects this wrong notion which we feel today that I am the body, the mind, the ego. It, it removes that wrong notion. And on removal of that wrong notion through that great statement Tatvamasi, which shows our act actual identity with that Supreme Self, that we are not this limited jiva, limited being, we are actually that pure consciousness, we are that pure, pure awareness. That statement, which reveals that oneness, that is liberation. Mean, meaning, specifically, there's so many beautiful ways in which liberation is described, but one is that 
we realize that there is no bondage and therefore there actually is no liberation. I am ever free. This is liberation. Next is, some people say that liberation is, um, you, you get that highest bliss, atyantika dukkha nivriti, you get the removal of sorrow, paraman and the prapti and the attainment of bliss, right? But an even deeper sense is what happens during liberation, you attain what already was attained. <laughs> you attain what already was attained and you remove what was never there. Hmm? So whatever, whoever you are, means you realize that you are that. You attain what's ever attained and you remove what was never there. That notion that I am bound. So this is Mukti Sadhana. This is Mukti Sadhana. And that is the power of knowledge. That's the power of knowledge. Once it, it is so clear and it is so deep, then one realizes that they are actually free. The problem with us is we like to feel bound. We like to feel bound in the sense that we go on this quest and we go and we keep going and we keep going and we feel like we haven't gotten it yet. We haven't gotten it because it's so far away. Actually, it's the opposite. We haven't gotten it because it's who we are. <laughs> it's not that it's so far away. It's not that it will take so much time. We haven't gotten it because it is, it is us. It is not even close. It is us. It is here. It is now. It is I. That is that liberation. Mm. So knowledge is enough. Knowledge alone is enough. So in this verse, the whole, uh, you know, the Anubandha Chatushtaya becomes complete. Anubandha Chatushtaya means the fourfold factors that tie us to the text. Chatushtaya, fourfold, Anubandha, that tie us to the text. We now understand who the student is, Adhikari, the one who feels really bound in the world, who wants to be free. And we now understand Vishaya, the subject matter, is the oneness between the individual self and the Supreme Self. And the Prayojana, the goal is liberation. And so why should we pick up this book? What is the Sambandha or connection? This book is the Bodhaka, Bodhaka or Pratipadaka, the revealer of Pratipadya, of the knowledge of the self. So that's why we're picking up this book, because it's the revealer of the knowledge of the self. And therefore, sincere seekers now enter into this text. Now, this, the student now, asks questions from the guru now the student now we are taking it back to the student because the guru gave the answer in brief this, this is what it is this is all it is but the student has some questions so we will see that now in verse 7 shishya vacha shishya vacha ko jiva kah parashchatma Kojivakaparashatma-tadatnyam-vakatham-tayohu-tadatnyam-vakatham-tayohu-tattvamasyadivakyam-vakatham-tattvamasyadivakyam-vakatham-tattpratipadayet-kathamtattpratipadayet. Kojiva kaf parashchatma tadat nyam vakatham tayoho tatva masyadi vakyam va katham tat pradipadayet. So the student asks four questions. 
you told me all of these things, but I don't understand any of these terms. So the student asks question one. Kaha jiva means who is the jiva? Who is the jiva? I want a detailed explanation. Who is jiva? Question two. Kaha para atma means who is paramatma? Who is that supreme self? So first define to me who is actually this jiva that you keep talking about and who is this paramatma because there's so many notions going around. Tadatmyam va katham tayoho. Third question, how is there oneness, tadatmya, between the two? Because as I understand, jiva seems like this individual being with limited strength, limited knowledge, limited ability, uh, limited everything. But when I think of Paramatma or what they call God, it, that, that seems to be this power which is unlimited, unlimited strength, unlimited knowledge, unlimited capacity. So how are you saying that there is a oneness between the two? Tadatmyam va katham tayoho. Tatvamasyadi vakyam va. And this tatvamasi, this great statement, katham tat pratipadayet. How does it reveal the oneness? How does, how does this tatvamasi work? Is it uh, because when I, when we, we see or we hear the word tat, it corresponds to something far. And when we hear the word tvam, it corresponds to something so close to our hearts. So how do I put these two things together? Tat, tvam, asi. I'm confused. I have these four questions. Please clarify everything for me. So the guru says, okay, you have four questions. I have four answers. And here the guru first gives the answers in brief, and then again the student comes back. So let's see what the guru says in next verse number eight. Guru Ruvacha, Guru Ruvacha, Atra Bruma Samadhanam, Atra Bruma Samadhanam. Konyo jivastva me vahi. Konyo jivastva me vahi. Yastvam pritchasi maam koham. Yastvam pritchasi maam koham. Brahmhei vasina samshayaha. Brahmhei vasina samshayaha. Atra bruma samadhanam konyo jivastva me vahi yastvam prichasi maam koham brahmai vasina samshayaha. So the teacher says, Guru Vacha, Atra Brumaha. Here for, here, for these questions that you have, Brumaha Samadhanam. I am giving you the answers. Ko Anyo Jiva Stwamevahi means who else could be the Jiva but you? <laughs> you are the Jiva. Yastvam Prichasi Mam Ko Ham means the one who is asking me who I am, that is a Jiva. The one who asks the question who I am. That is called jiva. So you are the jiva. Oh, such a simple answer, right? Such a simple answer, but very, very loaded. And here, this is an important point because nowadays, especially in the age of AI, right? We feel like, okay, are they sentient? Are they conscious beings also? Because of the AI or artificial intelligence like chat GPT and all of that can do so many, many, many things, which is wonderful. But that uh, AI cannot 
have a subjective first-hand experience, right? So it can definitely think and it's programmed to come up with ideas and, you know, comparisons and analyze data. It's, it's trained to do that. It can even, you know, speak. It can even, you know, create things, however, in the way it's programmed. But it cannot have that first person experience of I. That is a conscious experience. That only happens in the awareness, in the awareness. That only happens because it's the same thing. Our brain, right? We can say that our brain can think. Our brain can think. It has uh, ideas and concepts, etc. The mind expresses through the brain, but the brain can never generate a first person experience. It cannot. So, that consciousness which reflects in the mind enabling us to have that first person experience that is what makes the jiva that we have the subjective experience of i am and there's no denying that i am so who is the jiva you are the jiva the one who's asking me this question is the jiva who is Paramatma? Brahma. Brahma is Paramatma. When we say Paramatma, God, Supreme Self, that is Brahma. And the word Brahma means Brahatvat Brahma. That which is big is Brahma. So that which is infinite is Brahma. And you are asking about uh, Tadatmya, right? What is this oneness? Brahmaivasi, you are Brahman. There is not even to even say that there are two. There are no two. There is just one. You yourself are Brahman. Means in essence, you are Brahman. That's the answer. That's the oneness. The oneness is that there is no two. There is only one. <laughs> there is no two. There is only one. Brahman. You are Brahman. And how is this generated from, or how is this revealed from this statement, Tattvamasi Nasamshayaha, doubtlessly, without any doubt. So, means when we inquire into Tattvamasi very clearly, uh, taking each word, understanding it, and if we do it doubtlessly, then that statement has the ability to give us that knowledge. So if we are very clear about that statement, that is one aspect. But remember the second aspect is also purity. If the mind is very pure, sharp, subtle, and able to grasp it, able to understand it, then it will be revealed. So the student asks four questions, the teacher gives Four answers. Who is Jiva? You are Jiva, the one who asked this question. Who is Paramatma? Brahma, that which is infinite. What is this Tadatmya or oneness? The oneness is that there's actually only one. It means you are Brahman, that's it. And how does Tatvamasi reveal it? Doubtlessly, without any doubt. Now, the student said this went all this all went way over my head <laughs> this all went way over my head so let me ask you a little bit deeper now let me just break down this question a little more and in verse number nine shishya vacha padartham meva janami Padartham eva janami nadya pi bhagavan sputam nadya pi bhagavan sputam aham bram heti vakyaratham aham bram heti vakyaratham pratipadye katham vada pratipadye katham vada Padartham meva janami 
ನಾದ್ಯಾಪಿ ಭಗವನ್ ಸ್ಫುಟ ಅಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೇತಿ ವಾಕ್ಯಾರ್ಥ ಪ್ರತಿಪದ್ಯೇ ಕಥಂ ವದ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಹಿ ಸೆಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅದ್ಯ ಅಪಿ ಅದ್ಯ ಅಪಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಪದಾರ್ಥಂ ನ ಜಾನಿ ಸ್ಫುಟ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಪದಾರ್ಥ ಅರ್ಥ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಪದ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ನ ಜಾನಿ ಸ್ಫುಟ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಮ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಯು ಸೆಡ್ ವಟ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಮ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಎನ್ ಭಗವನ್ ಹಿ ಕಾಲ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಭಗವನ್ ಅಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೇತಿ ವಾಕ್ಯಾರ್ಥ ಪ್ರತಿಪದ್ಯೆ ಕಥಂ so he says if i don't understand each word correctly then vakyartham in the statement that i am brahman aham brahman katham pratipadye how do you expect me to understand the statement vada you please tell me so i do not grasp the word meaning so how can i grasp the meaning of the entire sentence hmm? so to know anything anything very very clearly first we have to know each word what each word means and when we're learning a different language or we're, we're learning something for the first time if we don't know the word we get lost we get lost because we can't understand that meaning so if i can't understand the word for word meaning how am i going to understand the sentence how am i going to make sense of it and here he gives the sen- sentence as aham brahmasmi means i am brahman because that tatvamasi that that thou art that has to translate to i am brahman when the teacher says that thou art that you are we can't go back and say that you are <laughs> right it has to translate to i am brahman so he says i can't understand so you please tell me vada and this putam is to be used with all of that so you tell me very clearly each one please break it down for me right and so the teacher says okay i will do that i will break everything down for you each word what is tuam first he starts with tuam then he's going to go into tat and then he's going to go into the oneness and after doing all of this then he brings it all together so that the statement becomes clear doubtlessly clear okay so this section from here on we will enter into the next class today i will have to uh, stop a little bit early because we have a program after this so i will say the closing prayer and then if there are any questions or thoughts we can take that up for a few moments om purnamada purnamidam purnat ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ